My name is Yanni Petters and I have been exploring painting on glass, a technique also known as Ver Eglemise, since the early 1980s when I trained as a traditional sign writer. In this short film, I would like to explain and illustrate how this technique is done. My theme has always been plants, particularly Irish wild plants. I source most of my subjects near my home in County Wicklow, and there is a local meadow nearby which is an excellent source of material. Before I commence a glass painting, I choose a day with good light and head off down the field in search of a suitable specimen. In this case, I want to paint bird's foot trefoil, a common meadow plant. Once I have chosen a good specimen, I begin to sketch it in pencil. And then I use water-soluble colour pencils to colour elements of the sketch for reference. I add water to blend these colours, being careful to capture the subtle tones of leaves and stems. Back at the studio, I translate the sketches into a design onto tracing paper. I do this by eye. I refine this drawing on a fresh sheet of tracing paper from the first design, ruling out the edges which will give the glass size for the work. The next step is to trace the design in reverse in black pen. I check over the design before going on to the next stage. Then I prepare the glass, which is window glass. It must be cleaned and degreased with whiting and meths. I clean the glass both sides and then dry it thoroughly, including the edges. The front of the glass must be protected with adhesive plastic because the next stage is to etch the glass with acid. The plastic is rolled onto the glass and trimmed. Hydrofluoric acid is used to etch the surface and a mask and gloves are essential when using this acid. The acid paste is sponged on evenly. The etch creates a tooth for the paint which will be applied later. I usually prepare a number of pieces of glass in a batch to save time when making more glass paintings later on. When the acid has bitten for long enough, I scrape off the excess paste and wash the glass thoroughly. The glass must be dry before I check that the etch is even. I can then remove the plastic from the front of the glass. The result of the etching is a frosted effect like this, which is slightly rough to aid the adhesion of paints. Now I lay my drawing under the glass. 
it has to be reverse side up. I want to engrave parts of the design so I trace these onto the glass first. The engraving tool has a carbide tip which cuts a fine line on the glass. I use a large soft brush to remove glass splinters and then rub out the pencil lines. Again I remove dust with the brush. Next I outline the design with a special water soluble pencil. Again dust is removed with the brush. Now I apply colour using the water soluble pencils which I blend with water. At each stage I view the front of the work to check the progress. Checking again. Next I add shading with the black pencil and use water to blend and create shadows. Once again I check the front. Adding more shading, checking again, the process is quite systematic as you can see. I remove any dust with the brush again. I use special glass paint to enhance the colour. It gives the colours a rich translucent finish. I have to allow the paint to dry before I can view the front properly. I mix varnish with the paint to give me a wider range of tones. Checking again and adding more colour. Next I apply gold size onto selected areas. The size must be applied evenly and allowed to dry to a tacky state so the gold will adhere to it. This has to be timed and tested for tackiness. Gold leaf comes in two and a quarter inch squares in many different tones. I am using white transfer gold leaf, which looks like silver and enhances the colors on the glass. The gold is pressed onto the sized area and rubbed down gently. Timing is very important because the gold size can be affected by ambient temperature and humidity. To avoid blemishes in the finish, great care must be taken with the gilding. Once the gold is on the glass, the excess is brushed off with a soft brush. I check the front again, especially checking for holes in the gilded parts. The gold is then burnished with a soft cloth. To protect the work and to make the glass clear in the areas that are etched, I varnish the whole piece of glass. After allowing the varnish to dry for 24 hours, I check the design from the front again. I can now decide whether to leave the background clear or colour it. I've decided to paint the background white in this case. sponge on the paint so there will be no brush marks. After the piece has dried for 24 hours it's ready for framing. You can see how the light catches the gold and the engraved line. I have also been experimenting with using different backgrounds. This is a version with a black background and here's one with a clear background. The term ver eglemise comes from the name of an 18th century artist and collector of glass paintings called Jean-Baptiste Glomi. 
Painting and gilding on the back of glass as a folk art is known to have been in existence since at least the 3rd century AD. The first known specific reference to this technique as painting on the back of glass was made in Augsburg, Germany around 1684. This was to differentiate it from the craft of stained glass. It became prevalent amongst farmers in Bohemia and Bavaria who produced works on glass to supplement their farming income. During the 18th and 19th centuries, it grew to become a cottage industry in Central Europe with religious icons as a popular subject. Thousands of these little paintings were produced during this time. Painting on glass was also practiced in other parts of the world. It was known in the Canton province in China, where artists painted decorative mirrors and copies of old masters for export to Northern Europe, especially Britain. They also produced highly detailed work for the home market. Other examples of high quality painting on glass can also be found in India and Indonesia. Painting on glass was also a common technique among sign writers who used it to create fascia signs, decorated windows and mirrors. It is still being done nowadays, although nowhere near as much as during Victorian and Edwardian times. In the 1920s in Germany, the technique was explored by members of the Blue Rider group of artists such as Kandinsky, Mark, Clay and Munter. Their work brought folk art into the realm of fine art. However, despite the interest from this distinguished group, there are very few artists using the technique nowadays. Thank you.